ahead and get started. Um, so uh, maybe they'll pop up in a second. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, like he said, my name is Brittany Nip. I'm one of the bullying resource teachers. And I also have with me today, Steve Giddings. You want to say hi, Steve? Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. And we're going to talk today about bullying prevention and some of the support um, that we've that we're able to give and some that we've researched over this summer and throughout NTI. So we'll go ahead and get started. Again, we are the Bullying Prevention Department. Our supervisor is Ms. Crystal Carter. Our resource teachers are Steve Giddings and myself, Brittany Nip. And then we also have a clerk, Miss Janet Young. And our email addresses are there. If you ever need anything, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, and we're happy to get back with you as soon as we can. So our department, um, a lot of people, when we started these presentations during NTI and over the summer, weren't really sure what our department did. So we always like to review that. And our department is, our purpose is to provide educational resources and support JCPS, all stakeholders, concerning everything bullying prevention. We provide resources and supports that are intended to build capacity within the learner, whether that be a student or an adult. We want to increase awareness, reduce bullying behavior, and aid all persons involved in any bullying situations. We also work to increase positive culture and climate within schools and throughout all of JCPS. Um, a lot of times we come into schools and people think that we handle disciplinary actions, but we are not a department that handles disciplinary actions. We might offer suggestions or guide administrators or teachers through that process, but we do not handle the disciplinary action or hand those out. Um, we do offer educational presentations and resources on bullying prevention to students, staff, families, and community stakeholders. We monitor and we distribute tip line reports and we communicate with the assistant superintendent's offices as needed. We conference with students, staff, and parents as requested in concerning bullying prevention. We even are able to go into classrooms and observe students in an effort to pinpoint possible bullying situations, but also to support you guys as teachers um, in working through any bullying situations that you feel like might be happening in your classroom. We offer recommendations in an effort to help reduce other bullying to take place. And we are trained as OVEUS Bullying Prevention Program Trainers. And we are certified to train nationally to create a sustainable team within a school. So you might see um, these posters hanging up throughout JCPS and throughout any schools or school um, buildings, any office buildings could be at um, Anhus, but this is the JCPS definition of bullying and we have three key components. So as I'm reading the definition, kind of think when you hear these three key components that are deliberate, repetition or repetitive, and an imbalance of power. So as JCPS defines bullying, bullying is repeated and deliberate physical, verbal, or social attacks or intimidation directed towards another person. There's a real or perceived imbalance of power between the person displaying bullying behavior and the person harmed. Bullying may be done by one individual or a group and is repeated or has the potential to be repeated over time. And cyberbullying is bullying that takes place using electronic technology. So really important, those three key components that bullying is deliberate, it's repetitive, and there's some type of imbalance of power. Also under that definition, you will see our um, the bullying hotline phone number, as well as the website where you can put in a tip line report and Steve will go over that 
later in our presentation. So we're going to start with signs of possible bullying. And I know as teachers, we can all think back or currently think of a student who I'm getting ready to describe. So I want you to just think for a minute, close your eyes, do whatever makes you think back to a student. And I'm going to describe what a student might be going through if they are getting bullied. So this is the student in your class that's frequently complaining of headaches, always has a stomach ache, they're, they have nervous habits, they're anxious, they're always stuttering, nail biting. Think about that kid. Did you notice this kid have decreased self-esteem? Did their mood or personality change? Maybe they used to be really outgoing and all of a sudden they keep to themselves. Do you have a kid that you can think of who always wants to stay home from school? Or maybe that parent that keeps calling or messaging you saying, I cannot get little Johnny to, to come to school anymore. He's not wanting to come. Do you think of a kid who avoids all of a sudden social situations or friends? Are they coming to school or are they at school, are you noticing unexplained cuts, bruises, scratches? Are their clothes being torn up? Are their backpacks being ripped? And are you noticing a drop in grades? Like I said, I'm sure we can all think of a student who we probably saw these signs and not always is it bullying, but definitely something we wanna check in with these kids on and to be aware of. Now, we've talked about the signs of a student being bullied, but let's think about the student in our class who might be bullying others. I'm going to list some characteristics. And again, close your eyes and I want you to think about the student in your class who might have these characteristics or you might notice one or two of these and that could be a sign that you might want to check in with them more closely. So do you have a student or you could have a student in the upcoming school year who appears to enjoy having power and control. They love dominating others or have friends who do whatever they say. They seem to enjoy conflicts and their fights. So, you know, as we say, they're always in the middle of something, always loving the drama. Um, they may be disrespectful of rules or authority. So they may give you a hard time because they don't feel like the rules apply to them. Do they appear to enjoy seeing others fearful or embarrassed? Do they show little or no empathy or compassion for others? They might blame the person's harmed and saying, well, they deserved it. And they're unable to see things from the other's point of view. And this is really important when you have those one on one conversations, when you know there's an issue in your classroom and this student is just adamant that they did nothing wrong. They can they have no empathy and they cannot understand why you're even having to pull them out into the hallway and have a conversation with them. I know back when I was a teacher at Kenwood or working with kids at Simple Elementary, I had this student a lot. So being aware is definitely gonna help you be proactive in dealing with these students. And not only does bullying have effects on your classroom climate, but it can affect your whole school climate. So it could create a climate of fear and disrespect it could interfere with learning because a lot of times when we're having these bullying incidents, it disrupts the day. And I know you can think of times when you've had a behavior issue or, or any type of issue that interrupts learning. It's hard to get your kiddos back and focused. Um, your students may feel insecure and they not like school as well. They might not want to come anymore. And most importantly, students may perceive a lack of control and caring from adults. And I feel like this is important because I can remember as a classroom teacher, I wanted my parents and students to know that I had control over my classroom. So 
a lot of times when you have even one or two issues in your class, parents may perceive that you don't have control of your classroom. And they that may not be true at all. So just really building those relationships with kids is so important. That way you can pinpoint and be proactive if you see an issue starting to happen. So most importantly, we have focused a lot this summer, and if you've been on any of our other PDs on cyberbullying, just because of our students being home, um, we've been doing NTI since March, and we're gonna continue that. And I think it's important for us to realize how much technology they have at their fingertips, whether it be a Chromebook or their cell phones or their parents' cell phones. So we're gonna take a little bit and kind of focus on cyberbullying and some of the platforms that we've noticed kids are using. So cyberbullying is defined as willful and repeated harm that's inflicted through the use of computers, cell phones, and other electronic devices. I'm sorry, it went too fast. Um, and in our research, we found that about 37% of young people between the ages of 12 and 17 have been bullied online at some time. And about half of our LGBTQ students experience online harassment. 60% of young people have seen this happen online and most will not intervene. And only one out of 10 people bullied online will tell a parent or an adult. Again, they are afraid to be in trouble or a lot of times they just don't wanna be involved. So again, going back to when I was saying we're gonna to touch on some of the cyberbullying platforms. These are the most common platforms um, throughout our research that we found. So we have Instagram, TikTok, Ask FM, Chat Roulette, and Sarah All. And we're going to touch on each one of these, and we have some examples as well. So starting off with Instagram, um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Instagram, or if you have kids or kids in your classroom talk about it, Instagram, basically, you can post a picture, you can post a video, and then anyone can comment on that. So as you see in this example, you know, someone says, babe, you need eyebrows. Um, she looks like the grudge. Oh my gosh, you look so creepy. So a lot of inappropriate and nasty comments can go on here and really mess with kids' self-esteem. So that's something to be aware of. All right, and then TikTok. Um, this one has been up and coming, I feel like, and has really potential negative effects for students. As you can see at the bottom, the examples, you can, kids and I guess adults can also post music videos. They can put pre recorded audio on there, and it can cause addiction to students because they see other students and they suffer from what we call FOMO, the fear of missing out. And so they're constantly checking their TikTok, spending hours online. It also brings about bullying, and principals from all over the country have reported students being bullied on this app. Um, it makes students and kids compare to each other. Some students, they make challenges, they make outrageous and dangerous videos just to get people to like their videos and gain more followers. And then lastly, safety concerns. Um, there's no restrictions as to who can join the app, so it's not just kids or students from Jefferson County on the app. It can be people from all over the United States and outside of the country. And then your kids are talking to people all over the world. Um, so these are just a few things to be aware of on these platforms. And Steve, I'm gonna turn it over to you to talk about Ask FM. All right, thanks, Brittany. So again, um, with these platforms, a lot of them are anonymous. So just like um, right before we got on here, they were talking about the trolls this morning on, on this site. Um, there are trolls on every site that you go on to. Um, I mean, it's so, it's overwhelming sometimes because they pretty much have no filters. And uh, so these sites are, they're asking for that. And so when you get um, 
maybe a young person or a teenager who already has these self-esteem issues and body image issues, you can only imagine what some of these comments will do to them. You know, we're talking about um, health and mental health, and this plays very well into that. Uh, so continue with Ask a Film. This one, like I said, is anonymous, and you can see this an example here, uh, telling the person to go kill themselves. Do us a favor and kill yourself, make sure you succeed this time, go die, you know, Again, put yourself in that situation, of being that young young person who already has um, issues. We all have issues as teenagers with, you know, image and all that. So, you know, these it, it can be damaging to a person's mental health. All right, moving on. Uh, chat roulette. This is one that really scares me um, because you have your webcam and it just randomly puts you up with someone else who has a webcam. Uh, again, so picture a an adult this time who's up to no good going on this site trying to find um, impressionable young people who are willing to do whatever. Uh, and in this case here, we have um, a young person, the little boy on the bottom who says, I just killed my parents in their sleep. And then the ones on top are asking questions. How did you do it? And then so they go on and on in this whole conversation. And I put myself in the place of the people on top here. What would you do in that situation? Would you call the police? Do you think this this child is um, lying or just playing a joke? You don't know. So this could be really dangerous. Um, again, you know, you have adults on here who sometimes are up to no good. You've got the video camera right there in front of a child who um, is willing to sometimes do inappropriate things. So again, very scary chat roulette there. Moving on. And then Sarah Ah, this is another anonymous one, but um, the app, um, it kind of tells you that this is only people you know. So we have message here that's anonymous to Kimmy it says would you like to meet up because we haven't seen each other in a while how about 2 30 at the park near your house so Kimmy could think this is anybody uh, maybe a cousin a friend whoever that she hasn't seen in a while and imagine if she goes to the park at 2 30 to meet this person and again you know imaginations can run wild on these um, but we just we need to make sure we're using these apps appropriately and making sure our, our own children and our students are also using these appropriately. And while I'm speaking of these, we're gonna move on here in a second, but um, like Brittany said, over the summer, we did numerous um, presentations that go further in detail with cyberbullying and um, several more apps. And there's also um, some apps that can be used that monitor your children or your students um, activity online. And if you're interested in those apps, please reach out to us and we can send you links to those. Um, we can send you links to our presentations because it's all in there. There's apps for parents, um, there's apps for children, um, and they're very, some of them can be very helpful. So please let us know if you're interested so, in those. Uh, Stephen, um, somebody had a question about as uh, that Sarah Ah. Uh, uh, does it show the yes. name of the messenger or is it anonymous? It's anonymous. Okay. All right. So we talk about when students um, are being bullied or harmed. We're also going to talk about in a second um, the students doing the harm. But first, when we are in our classroom, we want to make sure that. Our students are feeling safe. That's always, I know when I was a classroom teacher, that was my number one priority is making sure my students were safe, physically, mentally, whatever. Um, and so this goes a long way to help ensure that. So if a student comes up to you and tells you that something's going on, we're gonna use what we call the four A's. And we're gonna go over these quickly. Um, and we'll spend more time on these and other presentations or again if you want more information please feel free to reach out to us 
So we're going to affirm the students' feelings. We're going to let them know it's okay to feel mad. It's, it's okay to feel embarrassed or upset. Um, these are natural feelings. We all have these feelings when these things happen to us. So let them know it's okay. Then we're going to ask a question, uh, get details, what happened? Because obviously things are different to each person. So uh, what happened in the situation? Who did this? What did they say? What did they do? How did you feel? Where did this happen? Get all the details. And then we want to assess the student's safety and act accordingly. So first of all, we want to make sure that they're immediately, their immediate needs are met and they're safe. Um, they're not being hurt or they're not actually in pain or anything like that at that point. Um, and then we want to make sure that we do what we can to um, keep them safe. So when we do that, we want to come up with an action plan. Now, this doesn't have to be some long drawn out event. Um, it could be something very quick, very simple. Uh, but you want to make sure you create this with the student input. Ask, ask them, what would you like to see happen? What, what would you need to see happen to make you feel comfortable or safe? Um, and, you know, just create something simple. One of the things that our department does, we make sure that there's follow-up. So if you make up one of these plans, make sure you follow up with that student to make sure the plan's working. Um, in our department, if we come in and work with students on action plans, we'll come back weekly, bi-weekly, whatever we decide upon, um, and just check in and make sure that that plan is working. So moving on to the person who's actually doing the harm, because they have mental health needs as well. We want to identify the problem, diffuse the, the reporting responsibility. We're going to let them know that we have to report this. So you're going to be straight with them. You're going to tell them, I heard you say this. I saw you do this and I'm required to report it. Let them know up front. You're going to apply appropriate or logical consequences. You're going to generate future so uh, solutions with the student. So when this happens again, what are you going to do? How are you going to feel? If this person looks at you funny in the hallway, how are you going to react? Um, making sure that they understand that this is probably going to happen again and giving them an avenue to think, what can I do that's more appropriate next time? We're going to try to help that student build empathy. And we do that by obviously putting ourselves in that person's situation. How would you feel if, and then make it personal to them. How would you feel if someone did this to your brother or sister? Or how would you feel if someone called your mother this name or your grandmother this name? Um, help them build that empathy. And then with, same as the last plan, you're gonna follow up to see if this plan is working. Don't assume just because you're not hearing anything from the um, person who's been harmed or the person doing the harm that everything's fine. Check in with both students, make sure that both their needs are being met. So like Brittany said earlier, we have a tip line and one of the, we get a lot of calls in our office, um, a lot of calls from APs saying, can you come um, help me talk to a student? Sometimes when we come in, um, students feel maybe sometimes more comfortable because they don't feel like they're gonna get in trouble by the principal or the assistant principal. Um, so when parents call us, we make sure that we have them communicate their concerns to the classroom teacher. Because a lot of times you get an upset parent, they're gonna go straight to the principal or sometimes they'll just call us directly. So we wanna direct them back to the classroom teacher, make sure that they communicate their concern with the school administrator. Sometimes if, if there's a need for a meeting, request a face-to-face -face meeting with the school, discuss the concerns or events or allegations. And if our department's needed to come in and kind of uh, be a mediator for that meeting, we're, we are more than welcome to do that as well. And then we ask them to submit a tip line report either online or on the phone. Um, both reports are the same exact. If you do it on the phone, you, um, you talk to a live person and they'll ask you a set of questions, you know, specifics of like what happened, who was involved, um, that sort of thing. And then if you do this online, you 
can go on at your own convenience and they'll ask you the same questions. You just fill it out, put all the information you can. Um, this report's been submitted to our office and we'll submit it to the superintendent's office. I'm sorry, su assistant superintendent's office. And we'll also send it to the school because they're ultimately still responsible for this report. They'll get five business days to address it and um, hopefully create a plan to help that situation. And then the report is still investigated at the school level. That's when if the school needs assistance or resources, we can support. A lot of times we'll get calls from principals or assistant principals asking if we can come in and uh, maybe speak to some of the students that were involved, uh, maybe sit in in a classroom, just see if these things are really happening and that sort of thing. When we speak with school and staff and families um, to get concerns addressed and handled. Uh, so like I said, sometimes we're mediators because um, a lot of times parents, you know, they go from zero to a hundred with their anger issues when their children are being, um, and they think their children are being hurt at school, which is understandable. All right, Brittany. All right, finishing up here. So here is our bullying tip line number. It's 888-393-6780. And like the bullying um, poster you saw earlier, these are also hopefully in a lot of schools and especially in the counselors and principal's offices. Um, if you don't have these and you would like to have them, we have copies. We also have electronic versions we can send you if you're interested. Um, please call us if you want these. We can pony them to you. We can drop them off at your school or send it to you electronically. Um, again, gcps.me forward slash bully. That's our website. And once you click on there, it'll take you to the bullying tip line, which is our next page. And you'll see the red B at the top. This is like a little red B stop sign or the blue one at the bottom that says report bullying. Once you hit that, it'll take you to our tip line, just the next page. And you'll see uh, bullying and harassment is um, circled there. That's the ones that our department handles. There's so many other, um, oh, uh, there's other departments that are involved with the um, tip line, but we only handle the bullying and harassment. So you'll click on begin a new report once you do that, you'll receive a case number. Make sure you write that case number down because if you need to get back in to edit, you'll need that number to um, get back in. If you don't have it, you won't be able to get back in. I know I kind of finished that one up quickly. Like I said, if you have any questions, um, concerns, if you need resources, we are willing to come in. We, we will come in and talk to students, even in your virtual classrooms, if you have issues. Um, we prefer maybe if another adult would be there, but we can still speak with students if you need. All right. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you so much for that, um, uh, uh, Stephen. Uh, great, great session there. Uh, Stephen Durham in the chat said, we really do need to teach empathy. And if you did not see Michelle Obama's speech last night uh, where she talked about empathy, man, she nailed it. So uh, empathy is really important.